Hello everyone, how you doing? And welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be taking a note from a lot of other YouTubers because it appears on my entire channel I've never done a dedicated video to complaining about YouTube. But when I see big creators that I've watched for a long time on the website pretty much getting fucked in the ass, it's it's kind of hard to watch at this point. Now Philip DeFranco is a creator that has been around on this website since pretty much its beginnings. He's someone that covers the news, but not just covers the news, he covers the news and he gets it right. And has never exactly been a big scandal about Philip DeFranco. I genuinely really do enjoy Philip DeFranco's content. He's the first person I go to to see cover a news story rather than the biased horse shit like CNN, BBC and Fox News. I would just purely go to the Philip DeFranco show. And that's why this video is kind of important to me because I'm seeing Philip DeFranco get fucked by the website and that's been happening for quite a while but recently it's gotten worse. Philip DeFranco uploaded a video on his YouTube channel titled Tired Frustrated but also excited. In this video, he basically said it's becoming increasingly difficult to become successful and continue to be successful on the website after his channel keeps getting restricted and restricted and restricted by YouTube themselves. DeFranco said in this video, at first it was just YouTube demonetizing his videos here and there. DeFranco said in this video that at first it was YouTube demonetizing his videos left, right and center. And if you're not sure what monetization means, it's basically the main platform to give YouTubers money. It's the thing that pays the bills at the end of the day. It's third party advertising coming into the websites and advertising their brand at the starting of somebody's video. So that ad you saw at the starting of this video, well, the ad I hope you saw at the starting of this video, that's basically paying the bills. It's helping me earn money, it's helping me survive, and it's also doing the same for every other creator on the website. And I know there are third party ways to make money, such as Patreon, in which I do actually have one myself. But at the end of the day, for most people on the website, YouTube monetization is the main way for people to make money. And YouTube demonetizing Philip DeFranco's videos wasn't exactly a big problem, because since he has such a big platform, there are other ways for him to make money, such as him launching DeFranco Elite. And DeFranco Elite is basically a subscription based service on his Patreon where his followers can get extra stuff if they pledge a monthly fee. And I fully advise other creators to do this because honestly, it is the best method at this point. You're not guaranteed any form of living off YouTube given the state of the website and just in general how fragile things are on this website at this point. Now there was a little bit of controversy about Philly D and DeFranco Willie and honestly, I couldn't give a fuck what any YouTuber says negatively about DeFranco Elite. If people want to support a favorite creator of theirs, they want to give them some money, they know that things are a bit difficult, or in general, they just want to give money to a creator they watch, I haven't got a problem with that. And I don't understand why anyone would have a problem with somebody giving their own money, which they have their choice over, to a creator who they want to help. I'd rather Philip DeFranco have a Patreon than do fucking CSGO gambling videos, wouldn't you? But I am actually getting a bit off topic here. The main problem actually isn't in correlation to monetization as Philip DeFranco explains here. Unfortunately, we're being hit by what I would call a, a sister algorithm. Often when you see YouTube comments about demonetization, they, they often separate it from suppression of views. And it's accurate, but also at the same time, very misleading. Technically, demonetization and the rating of a video, let's say, as mature, where it's unable to be on trending, on the front page, watch next, the recommended tab. Think of those as separate, but very, very similar levers. So what he's basically saying here is on YouTube, there's this common belief that monetization Monetization affects promotion, and I had this argument countless amount of times with my friends such as The Right Opinion, I'm Alex, everyone has this argument if you're on YouTube. So for example, the second most viewed video on my channel, the video about Tana Mojo, has 700,000 views, but that video, it might surprise you, is completely demonetized. It gets no ads whatsoever. Now I don't have 700,000 subscribers, I fucking wish I do, and you know, you can subscribe to the channel if you want to help me get there, but how did these 700,000 people see the video? Well, the video was actually promoted in YouTube's suggested videos and recommended section. From the statistics, it shows that 80% of the views on this video came from suggested videos. So if you're watching this on your desktop or your laptop, that little sidebar down there, that is actually a massive player in getting YouTubers more views. So you know, if you uh, ever, ever see one of my videos in the suggested tabs, uh, I'd appreciate if you go and watch it. But no, seriously, a lot of people are now complaining that their videos aren't getting promoted, especially creators like Philip DeFranco. As a side note, YouTube needs to change the back end to let us know what our videos are being rated. In an ideal world, we'd love to also know why. Right, so an example last week, several of our videos were suppressed. Tons of comments saying the video is not popping up where it normally does, what's the deal? The next morning, the videos have around 300 to 450,000 less views than the average videos normally have. One of the biggest problems is, is this is now happening at an alarming rate. Now, a lot of people's 
like the response to this is, oh, he's he's still getting 800,000 views. Like, I'm only getting 10 views on my Minecraft Let's Play. Now, honestly, if I'm given the harsh truth, this argument is just completely fucking stupid. Philip DeFranco isn't just a YouTuber. Philip DeFranco is a company, a network. He hires a complete production team. This means that his YouTube channel needs to reach every single one of his subscribers. If it's only getting half the views it was getting before, that means his entire growth is split in half and his earnings are split in half. For a business to be successful, it needs to grow. And for it to continue to be successful, it needs to continue to grow and earn money at the same time. If his views gradually do get cut in half, it sets a massive problem. Yes, his views aren't exactly bad or horrible compared to a lot of other creators at this point. But seeing as his views over 24 hours are being halved, it's genuinely kind of worrying to see. And if we don't talk about this, it genuinely gives YouTube the room to do whatever the fuck they want. Honestly, it could set a really nasty precedent for the website. Look at Leafy is here, for example, completely cut off from the website. Anision, completely cut off from the website. Yes, these two people have done completely awful things in their past, but honestly, in my eyes on a website like YouTube, which is based on free speech, well, in the past based on free speech, we shouldn't be restricting people on some of their actions which aren't necessarily illegal. If people don't want to watch a creator, that, that's fair enough. I completely agree with that. So if people see a content cop and they think, wow, that content is shit, I don't want to watch it anymore, that's fair enough. That's completely fair enough. But in my eyes, it's a bit fishy how both of their channels just completely dropped off after November 2016. Now, in the past, we've seen things such as YouTube Agegate, where the belief that YouTube are categorizing channels into certain age levels. For example, a channel like mine, where there's not much controversy, there's not much swearing. In general, I've never really breached community guidelines. I'd say this channel is probably age 13 plus in the age levels of things. But then you take a channel like Leafy is here, who is commonly known for bullying children, breaching community guidelines, I'd say his channel is most likely 18 plus. Now obviously, Philip DeFranco and Leafy is here are two completely different situations. One is known for bullying children, one is a news channel. But the news is usually something which mainly is based around negativity, and negativity in recent times is typically terrorism and shootings, and these things are sadly on the rise. And because Philip DeFranco has been frequently, more than usual in the last years, been reporting these sort of news stories, I feel like, and everyone else feels like, that the algorithm on YouTube is preventing these videos from being promoted as a whole. And I can't exactly blame YouTube for doing this, given the recent ad crisis, where advertisers have completely pulled out of the website because they don't want their brand to be on a certain video. Which is a bit weird to see considering CNN advertised Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper every five minutes during a mass shooting. It's all rather hypocritical in the world, but I guess this is something YouTube are having to deal with at this point. In my opinion, Philip DeFranco is right about there being this sister algorithm, which is age restricting and in general restricting channels completely after they cover certain topics like shootings or terrorism. Because what is an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of rules to be followed to solve a certain problem. And the problem YouTube have had in the last two years is that advertisers keep pulling out and they want advertisers to stay on the website. So the solution that the algorithm has found itself is to stop monetizing videos and to stop promoting videos which have either hate speech in it or they're talking about terrorism or shootings, no matter what the context. And the algorithm doesn't really take into context of things. And again, I don't necessarily think this is YouTube's fault because the YouTube algorithm is believed to be self-learning. And that's kind of scary. It really is kind of scary to think my main source of income is being ran by an algorithm that learns things itself. But going back to Philip DeFranco, he's basically said he's gonna take a week away from YouTube and hopefully come back and everything's gonna be sorted again on his channel. There are a lot of problems on this website and in my eyes, this problem is the main one. If channels like Philip DeFranco are getting affected and fucked by YouTube, think about how channels like me, think about all the YouTubers you watch that do relatively controversial things and talk about certain controversial topics don't you think it's a bit worrying? Even people like Shane Dawson in their conspiracy theory videos talk about some pretty dodgy shit. What if YouTubers like him start to get restricted? It's all so strange at the moment. It really is the time that as a viewer, you should start turning on notifications for YouTubers that you watch every day. Because basically you're not being notified for every single video. You maybe get notified for one out of four videos, but you're definitely not getting notified for every single video. And I have seen that on certain videos of my own, such as my video about Count Dankida, for example. That video, I talked about a political situation and it got age restricted, demonetized, and no promotion whatsoever. But then I talk about Jake Paul and a family friendly video, 
it gets around 30,000 views. So it, to me, it brings up the question of are there any competitors out there to rival YouTube? Now people on this website argue that there's no way possible that someone's gonna beat the almighty YouTube. And yeah, I think YouTube, yeah, it's pretty good. It's a, it's a decent website, but I definitely think there is room to beat it. Over the last 20 years, companies have had monopolies on social media, such as MySpace. Everyone thought MySpace was always gonna be around, but then comes along Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook, the lizard man completely destroys MySpace, and here we have it today, Facebook is the biggest social media website on the planet. I really wouldn't be surprised, given the shit heap YouTube is, that a company like Amazon comes along and makes a rival website. Amazon, please do it, but please, please just, Give me some form of monetization, please. I'm, I'm begging. Obviously, websites such as Daily Motion and Vimeo are fucking trash, but it doesn't mean Amazon can't create a good website themselves. In the past, Amazon have rivaled Netflix with Amazon Prime, so why not rival YouTube? There have been articles about it, so I really wouldn't be surprised to see it happen in the next few years. At the end of the day, lads, I don't want to leave YouTube. I've been on this website since 2006. I've been watching creators grow and become what they are now, and I really don't want to leave that behind, but I really think that a rival would help kick Susan up her ass to actually fix the fucking website. YouTube are known for not having any clarity whatsoever and just giving bullshit generic responses to anyone with an actual problem. And I hope they see Philip DeFranco situation and see creators getting annoyed and upset and just having enough and they actually give us some sort of response. If you want to actually see all my videos, please turn on notifications. I'm actually being serious. The notification bar is something that really does help but YouTube doesn't actually give you any notifications automatically. So I would really appreciate if you manually did that. In conclusion, I don't think YouTube want to keep age restricting and demonetizing people because it makes them lose money. But all we're asking as creators is YouTube, have some fucking clarity. Let us know what's going on and things may get a bit better. Maybe creators could adapt to change if you let us know what the actual change is. Now that is the end of the video, and I know it was serious, but you don't need to watch every single video of mine. Now this video was definitely more serious than normal. I'm gonna go back to my normal stuff tomorrow. I just was kind of annoyed by the situation, but I really appreciate it if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it and wanna see more content like this. If you do in general want to see me talk about more serious things, I really appreciate it if you let me know in the comment section because I do want to talk about things like this. It really is actually enjoyable for me to talk about. I like to talk about politics. I like to talk about these sort of issues. But it just depends on what you guys want, really. So I appreciate it if you let me know in the comment section. If you want to let me know at Twitter as well, iNabbaTV or Instagram at iNabba, you can DM me or tweet me. And before I end the video, I would, as always, like to thank my Patreons. Big thanks to Leslie, Shauna, Christian, Bugger Badger, Cubes and Amy, Ghoster, Devin, James, Michelle, Qua, Dora, Sophie, Joe, Ali, Anna, Logan, Rebecca, Cyber, Rachel, Maya, Billy, Zombie, I don't know, Brian, Cole, Cupid Pastor, Rob, Zero Fast, Majestic, Rockstar. Thank you so much for supporting the Patreon. The support, as always, is amazing. They're all also, is a Discord server. If you want to join it, all the links are in the description. Thank you for watching the video, people. I will see you tomorrow.